Hi, this is Rebecca from Rebecca Sewing Corner, and today I'm going to be talking about binders again. So this time I'm going to be taking my uh, double fold binder, which I've already used the paper hack to turn it into what's called a single fold binder. Um, and so I've left that in, in my, uh, in my single fold setup. And I want to show you actually how to turn this into a raw edge binder. Now it's pretty simple and it's almost exactly the same as the paper hack because all we're going to be doing is blocking off the upper shoot from, uh, from the double fold so that um, the strip of fabric from the binding doesn't flow into that and um, just smoothly goes through the middle section of the binder. Now, I think it's still important to block it off just to make sure that the fabric stays put when it's going through. Now you might have a stiffer fabric or you might be using fold over elastic FOE um, that doesn't need that extra guidance, but um, you still sh probably should put something in the bottom uh, and, and you know you could think about putting something in the top. Now to block off the upper shoot, it's exactly the same as uh, blocking off the lower shoot. So you'll need a piece of paper to, uh, to do that. Now it looks like I'm missing a piece of paper on my desk, so I'm going to go look for one and uh, we'll fold that up and put it in there. I'll be right back. Okay, found a piece of paper. Um, and very much like the, the one for the bottom fold, uh, you just sort of need to fold it up a little bit so that it has um, a bit of stability. So this one I have um, folded twice. Uh, and for my 36 to 10 millimeter binder, okay, it, it's it's a little bit wider. Um, it's still under the one centimeter, and actually, this the what's giving a lot of the width is is just a, a single layer of uh, of paper, and um, that really doesn't matter. So you don't have to be incredibly accurate with this one. I think on the lower piece, it's more important because you you have the the fabric sort of pushing down against it, and. As for the lower side, we're just going to stuff it up in there in that chute and push it forward all the way to the front. And we'll just have it sort of come out there. And actually, you see that that single flap of, of, of paper um, really doesn't doesn't uh, do much of a, anything uh, in there. So that is actually the first part. Which is blocking off the uh, the folds in the in the shoot and um, getting ready for your strip of fabric. Now I uh, will go over to my cutting table and cut up a strip of fabric and we'll have a look at that. Okay, I'm back. Now I um, mentioned in the first paper hack. Uh, video that uh, you kind of need to do a bit of math and figuring out you know what the width of your fabric needs to be. So my 36 to 10 millimeter binder I was sitting and thinking about it and I was like well okay it's probably going to need approximately a 20 millimeter um, two centimeter wide strip and and that's actually what it is. This, so this is cut just shy of um, of the uh, 20 millimeters so sort of on the left hand side and on the right hand side of the 20. Um, and uh, this seems to work for my binder very well. So that's something you're gonna kind of have to play with as for the single fold, for the raw edge, you're gonna um, you know, check to make sure you have the right width. So I'm gonna unroll this um, so that I have enough off of my spool, put a pin in it so it doesn't get away, and I'm gonna feed it into my binder. So exactly the same way uh, as we always have. As I keep mentioning, I like to have this piece when I'm coming out of the rake and the front of the rake. And then we're just going to feed it right in through. Now here you don't need to pay attention that you've made it into the upper and lower folds. Um, because you're not using those and we just sort of push it gently. And um, yeah. if we look at it from the front, there's really not much to see. You've got your outer, what's going to be your outer fold, and then you'll have two raw edges. So let me pull this to the back and we'll just have a look at it, just so we're well, still talking the same thing and um, see what it looks like. So 
We shouldn't be too surprised after we've had a look at the in-depth video on how to set up the bumpers on your binder, um, and we've looked at the results of the single fold. Looking at the results of the raw fold, you have basically your two edges, and this case, in this case they're now raw edges, but you have them staggered to each other, and that's what the results you want. I still want to have the raw edge on the wrong side of my project completely covered by the looper. Okay, for me, there's no reason to have this out flapping around. I want it covered. But on the right side of my project, I'd like to have um, this raw edge not covered and not like completely sewed down, but sort of flapping up a little bit um, in uh, you know uh, to the left of my my needle threads. And I think you know this is maybe not the look for everybody and not a look that everybody wants. Um, I used it on a pair of sweatpants, and um, I think you know once I wash them a couple times, it's going to give kind of a kind of an unfinished edge and sort of look you know a little bit more used look, and um, maybe that's something you're looking for. Okay, so you've got the staggered right here, just as you want to have it, and uh, with that, actually we're ready to uh, put this on the machine and and give it a go. So what have I done? I've got a piece of paper in the bottom to block off the um, binder to basically generate a single fold. And then I added a piece of paper on the top so that we um, block off both, shoot, uh, both fold shoots and uh, have raw edges. So I'm going to attach this to my machine and uh, let's give it a sew. Okay, so I just attached this to my machine. Now I keep mentioning I have a sweet spot, sweet spot marked here on my machine on a piece of uh, scotch tape with markers so I know exactly where my binder needs to be placed up. And as with the single fold, I have not changed the position of my bumpers. So in theory, there should not be a real reason to change the position of your bumper uh, of your binder on the machine uh, because you still want to have the same lineup with your needles. Okay, so we're going to just get started. I'm going to pull. Now I don't really need to fold anything. I'm just going to pull my strip to the back with a little bit of tension all the way back through uh, to behind the presser foot so that I can um, hopefully be sure that the uh, strip is not going to get stuck in my uh, feed dogs. Make sure I'm at past that. There we go. Put the presser foot down. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of stitches to make sure that my needle threads are secured. Uh, I've mentioned it, there's nothing more frustrating than to get to the end of your binding and realize that your threads weren't secured and you started too soon and the first part of your project is not properly caught. So I'm going to put you on mute and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I've secured my uh, threads, I hope. and. Um, I can see that my uh, fabric is not stuck in the back. So I'm going to feed a um, practice piece of fabric through and uh, we'll have a look at what this looks like when, um, when it comes out. Okay, we've made it to the end. I'm going to uh, release my project. Uh, as always, make sure you um, remove your project from the machine so that you've locked your threads. So pull them out, swipe under, snip, tug to the back. Now I don't have too much more binding left on this one. I didn't cut as long of a strip, so I'm just going to pull it through. And uh, let's get the machine out of the way and have a look at what we did. Okay, so from the right hand side of my project, you see that I have a relatively nice uh, distance to the raw edge. 
Okay, and here it's important that you have a nice, uh, nicely cut raw edge. And I've got a little bit of flap. So when I when I start washing this, um, it's probably going to roll up, right? And I'm going to kind of get a, a used look, and, and it might start getting scruffy. Now, you notice here at the beginning, um, it wasn't quite lined up as nicely. So that was a bit wider here. Um, that's also a good reason uh, to, you know, to have a, a relatively long piece of binding so that you have a good starting spot at the beginning to make sure things get all lined up. So here, not quite as nice. If we turn it over and look at the back side, uh, this is all nice and, and, and contrasting. So you can see that the raw edge on the wrong side of the uh, project is uh, encased. It's just inside of the, um, of the left needle and, uh, and you have nothing showing there. So, and the stretch. So, this concludes my, uh, my uh, video and my trick on how to turn a double fold into a raw edge binder and uh, yet again get a different look uh, out of the same tool. So I hope you enjoyed this session with me at Rebecca's Sewing Corner and look forward to uh, reading your comments and look forward to seeing you again soon.